is Kate BYP doing some testing and alignment on the TR3 sideband filter and half of it is tucked down in the chassis there. Crystals wrapped in paper, wrapped in copper foil, grounded, crystal cases grounded, wrapped in paper so it doesn't short, and the other half there. It was necessary to shield the circuit even though it's low resistance in the pass band, otherwise it gave off a couple of spurious signals. And the inversion capacitance was off a bit. And also had a problem with sideband distortion because the carrier frequency was too high. I mistakenly set it up to pass for CW, but that can't remain for sideband because it causes severe distortion. So with the old test equipment, signal generator from 100 cycles to 3KC, for a filter that should be about 20 <laughs> should be about 2100 wide we uh, flip on handy push the talk switch and get a nice envelope rather flat across the top and bottom and I tune the filter transformers we get some dipping and tripping and all that stuff. <clears throat> That's T13. This is T6. But the goal is to basically get a flat response across here and square here. Well, that's not going to happen. Not with this filter that only has four crystals. TR4 filter is better. The inversion capacitance, is, which is between the two halves, is responsible for creating that tail. And it was rather way too high. It was up here. So I had to change the value and tune it downwards to shrink that tail down. But now when I go to the RF generator and start dialing the frequency down, 29, 28, 27, 25, to 2100, that's getting right up, right about 2kc. I haven't measured, haven't measured 3 dB points, but it is what it is. And the carrier frequency is important because if, if it's incorrect, you're at channel 3, where channel 3 crosses, that's 0, or that's uh, 100 cycles. The uh, low end of the modulation. And if if the carrier frequency is off, this portion here will shift that way and bring the carrier in the pass band of the filter. That's very bad. So I use this display not only to check the shape of the filter response, but to also set the carrier frequency so that it just drops this distortion here to a minimum. And to measure the carrier frequency exactly without putting a pickup loop by the tube, which will throw the oscillator off frequency, I've laid an alligator clip wire over the chassis. Hanging down there, goes over to the coax to the ASU, and that picks up the oscillator tone at 3.9937, going towards zero beat, somewhere up here lose a tone at 997 starts to come back at 95 that cannot be used to set the zero beat because zero beat or null means there's no tone and we don't know where in that 20 or 25 cycles it is so there's a very handy feature on this radio called spot which gives a cw tone So we go down here, tune down, to get about that tone, then push the spot button, get zero beat at exactly 89939, give or take 10 cycles, and 10 cycles is pretty trivial because a crystal probably can't hold that much. So there's a huge advantage of this fancy receiver. 
throw the spot tone in, which is exactly 400 cycles, there's a beat at 39. So take 39, which is basically 0.4, and add 400 to it. And that means the oscillator is running on 899980. The testing is being done here with modulation input to the mic jack and taking the output at the grid of the final amplifier with no plate or filament voltage on the final. And I've taken out the 1000 picofarad grid capacitor and put in two larger capacitors of the same total value. <clears throat> that gives a test point that's isolated from DC. And if one of those capacitors, I mean originally if the, if the blocking capacitor broke down it would instantly destroy the tubes because it would put a high DC voltage on the grids and just fry the tube. And here one capacitor can short and there's still the other for blocking. So there's a sideband filter update, KBYP.